This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this lesson is on the ratio test. So we're given a series, sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of a sub k, or k goes from 0 to infinity. Frankly, it doesn't matter where the index starts. And we want to determine whether or not it converges. Well, we're going to examine a ratio of two consecutive terms. So in essence, this is like the geometric series. So we examine the limit as k goes to infinity of the k plus 1 term divided by the k term, a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k, the next term divided by the previous term. And recall, for a geometric series, if the absolute value of the ratio is less than 1, then the geometric series converged. So you can see this is very similar. The a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k, if that limit is less than 1, then that series converges absolutely. Notice we're looking at the absolute values of that to determine whether or not the original series converges. If the limit is less than 1, absolute convergence. If it's greater than 1, then it diverges. There's no way that it can go to uh, 0 if that ratio is greater than 1. If that ratio equals 1, the test is inconclusive, and we need to try another sort of test of convergence to see whether or not the series converges. So let's look at an example. We'll look at the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of 7 to the k over k factorial. So 7 to the 1 over 1 factorial plus 7 to the 2 over 2 factorial plus 7 to the 3 over 3 factorial, etc. Does that series converge or does it diverge? a sub k, the kth element, is just 7 to the k over k factorial. That is the sequence that defines this series. The next thing I need is a sub k plus 1. If I want a sub k plus 1, I replace the k's with k plus 1. 7 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. Our next move is to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k. So oftentimes we're just going to look at that ratio. What is a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k? And we're going to use absolute values since we prefer to think of this as a test of absolute convergence. So the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. 7 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial divided by 7 to the k over k factorial. No need to worry about absolute values. Everything here is positive. Remember, k are positive integers starting at 1 going to infinity. Everything is positive. To divide, we will invert and multiply. Make that times k factorial over 7 to the k. Now what simplifies here? 7 to the k plus 1 over 7 to the k. 1, 7 left upstairs. k factorial upstairs, k plus 1 factorial downstairs. Well, what is k plus 1 factorial? k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 dot 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 3, 2, 1. k factorial k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 dot 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 3, 2, 1. All that's left from these two is k plus 1 downstairs. All that's left from those two is 7 upstairs. So we just get 7 over k plus 1. The ratio test requires us to take the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k. So as k goes to infinity, what does 7 over k plus 1 go to? So that's what we're looking for. Limit as k goes to infinity of 7 over k plus 1. As k gets large, 7 over a large number plus 1 is going to get closer and closer to 0. But our issue with the ratio test is that limit is less than 1. If the limit is less than 1, we know the original series converges absolutely. So we can conclude that that original series converges by the ratio test. There it is. The sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of 7 to the k over k factorial converges by the ratio test because the limit was 0, which was less than 1. Let's take a look at our next question. Get a little preview on that. Sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of k to the k over k factorial. You see factorial, that's an indicator that the ratio test is probably the tool to use. What's a sub k? k to the k over k factorial, no surprise. a sub k plus 1 will be k plus 1 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. Replace all the k's with k plus 1. Then we need to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. 
But first we're taking a look at that ratio, a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. k plus 1 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial divided by k to the k over k factorial. Change division and multiplication, multiply by the reciprocal. Now what happens here? k factorial upstairs, k plus 1 factorial downstairs. All that's left from those two is k plus 1 downstairs. But now what? Upstairs I have k plus 1 to the k plus 1. Downstairs I have k plus 1 to the first. We can subtract the exponents and all we're left with is k plus 1 to the k. Upstairs k plus 1 to the k. Downstairs k to the k. Now I want to take the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k. As k goes to infinity, what does that go to? Well, to answer that question, I'm going to write it as a single fraction. k plus 1 to the k over k to the k is the same as k plus 1 over k to the k power. And then simplifying that, k over k is 1 plus 1 over k to the k. So some creative algebra there. And we still want to find the limit as k goes to infinity of this ratio. So what is the limit as k goes to infinity of absolute a sub k plus 1 over a sub k? Which is the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k to the k. And you may recognize that form. Is that one we've seen before? So this is the series we started with. And this is the limit that we have. And to solve this, I'm going to change the k's to x's. So 1 plus 1 over k to the k is going to become 1 plus 1 over x to the x. Limit as x goes to infinity. Because I want to use L'Hopital. And if I want to use L'Hopital, I want to think of these as real numbers rather than integers. Not a major issue. Hit the left side with the logarithm. Hit the right side with the logarithm. So now I have the log of that limit is the limit of the log of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. This exponent comes down front. So we get log L is the limit as x goes to infinity of x times the log of 1 plus 1 over x. x is going to infinity. 1 over x is going to 0. Log of 1 is going to 0. So I have an infinity times 0 case. Not fair to use L'Hopital. But if I change multiplying by x to dividing by 1 over x, you'll see we'll have a case where L'Hopital is fair. So what happens? I have log L is the limit as x goes to infinity. Change that x to divided by 1 over x. The top is log of 1 plus 1 over x. x gets large, that goes to 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Log of 1 is going to 0. 1 over a large number is going to 0. I have a 0 over 0 case, which enables me to use L'Hopital. So I've got to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, thanks to the fact that L'Hopital is fair. Now what is the derivative of the log of something? 1 over the something times the derivative of the something. So it's 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of this. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of 1 over x will be on top. The derivative of 1 over x will be on the bottom. Those will cancel nicely. Those derivatives are negative 1 over x squared. So as you can see, derivative of log of something, 1 over the something, times the derivative of the something, negative 1 over x squared, Bottom, the derivative of 1 over x, negative 1 over x squared. So those cancel, and we get log L is going to equal what? The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. As x gets large, that goes to infinity, so 1 over x goes to 0. 1 over 1 plus 0 goes to 1. So I get log L equals 1, but then what is L? If log L is 1, e to the 1 equals L or L is E. We're using the ratio test. E is 2.718. That's greater than 1. If the ratio is greater than 1, what's our conclusion on the ratio test? The series diverges by the ratio test in that case. Let's take a look at one more problem. We've got this series, which is a function of x. We want to find the values of x that enable that series to converge. And again, we're going to appeal to the ratio test. So the absolute value of a sub k is going to lose the sign flasher. So absolute value x minus 7 to the k over k times 2 to the k. Next up is absolute value of a sub k plus 1. That'll be x minus 7 absolute value to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 times 2 to the k plus 1. 
replacing all the k's with k plus 1. Then we have to look at the ratio a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. So that's this divided by this. If we're going to divide the fractions, we'll invert and multiply. If we do that, x minus 7 to the k plus 1 over x minus 7 to the k, we'll just leave an absolute x minus 7 upstairs. 2 to the k over 2 to the k plus 1, we'll just leave a 2 downstairs. The k over k plus 1 stays. So this is what we get. And I want the limit as k goes to infinity, which you're going to see k over k plus 1 is just going to go to 1. So this is what we're looking at. When the limit as k goes to infinity of that, we can pull the absolute x minus 7 over 2 in front. So we just have the limit as k goes to infinity of k over k plus 1, which will be 1. So we get absolute x minus 7 over 2. The ratio test converges if that ratio is less than 1. Multiplying both sides by 2, absolute x minus 7 is less than 2, which means negative 2 less x minus 7 less positive 2. Adding 7 to both sides, 7 minus 2 is 5, 7 plus 2 is 9, and we get an interval of 5 to 9. The last thing we have to do is to check the endpoints. Plug 5 into the function, plug 9 into the function, and see if it converges. So let's go ahead and check those endpoints. Here's our function. Looks like I'm giving the answer away. You'll see how we're going to get there in a minute. So here's f of 9. Replace x with 9. 9 minus 7 is 2, and I'm going to get 2 to the k. Well, 2 to the k will cancel the 2 to the k there, leaving the sum of negative 1 to the k over k. Does that converge? It's alternating. 1 over k is going to 0, and it's decreasing. So indeed, that converges by the alternating series test. Now we're going to go back to this function and plug in 5 for x. So we get f of 5 is the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, 5 minus 7 to the k, over k times 2 to the k. 5 minus 7 to the k, negative 2 to the k. So I've got negative 2 to the k upstairs, I've got 2 to the k downstairs. That's the same as negative 2 over 2 to the k, or negative 1 to the k. These are just always going to differ by a sign. Negative 2 over 2 just becomes negative 1. But here's the thing. Negative 1 to the k times negative 1 to the k. That's negative 1 to the 2k. When this is negative, this is negative. A negative times a negative is positive. When this is positive, this is positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. Yes, indeed, that's negative 1 to the 2k. But it's also always 1 in either case. Negative times a negative is 1. Positive times a positive one is 1. So what we get here is we get the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over k, which, of course, we recognize as the harmonic series. That diverges. So 9 was in the interval of convergence. 5 is not. 5 diverges. 5 is not included in the interval of convergence. So if I express that, I cannot include 5, but I must include 9. So my interval of convergence looks like this. Round bracket at 5, not including 5. Square bracket at 9. And that will conclude this lesson.